Welcome back to Timo's Dinky Detailing. Today I'm going to be restoring a Dinky 250 fire engine. This is a nice toy. This one's in rough shape. It's uh, The casting is all good. It's just paint is scratched up and the ladder is destroyed. Uh, I like this toy. It's kind of... Um, it's more like a child's toy than many other Dinky toys. I don't know if this realistically looks like a, a fire engine from any period, uh, but people can uh, tell me if it does. So we're going to start out and we're going to have to take off these uh, wheels and I'm going to try a different technique. Um, I've got uh, these vice grip pliers and I've I've ground a groove into them for holding an axle when you're hammering the end so I'm using that that groove to squeeze the, uh, the little head that's been formed on the axle so then I can just pull the axle out. So I just go around and I and I give it a squeeze. Uh, I had to go around a couple times. I speeded it up by cutting out some of the some of the times that I squeezed it. So it wasn't a quick process. But eventually I got it down so I could just pull the wheel off and then pull it out of the casting. So I go ahead and do the same thing for for the front for the front wheel. And after a bit of fussing, I get it down to where it comes off. It gives me another option for taking these uh, things off without using the Dremel tool. And does doesn't make any much noise doing it and very low probability of scratching up something or damaging the casting. So the wheels uh, were holding the base in, so the base just came straight out as soon as the axles were gone. And the ladder now I'm taking out, it's held in with uh, three little sheet metal tabs that are bent over. And it's, it's a pretty deep casting, so it's a little bit tricky to, uh, to straighten those things out. And this one's too low. So I have to get a screwdriver out to pry that one up. In the end, that's pretty simple. So most of these ladders on this toy are destroyed, so I'm going to have to do something about that. But everything looks intact except for the paint. So there it is in pieces. So first step, I'm going to put the base and the axles into some uh, rust remover. This is a very uh, slow process rust remover, but it's brilliant stuff, but you got to leave it overnight. So I put it in there and I cover it up and we'll take it out tomorrow. And now I'll prepare for stripping the paint and I go outside, a little boiling water, followed up by caustic soda. And here you'll see why I always go outside for this. This time it didn't splash out of the inner container, but it makes a lot of smelly uh, steam that comes off of it. So now we go back. Uh, this is the next day. I take the uh, base out of the uh, out of the rust remover. The rust is all gone, and I'm looking at this, people are saying that these bases are blued. I'm finding different different cases and I don't know what it is. This looks like it was paint, but as soon as I took the, the rust off with the rust cleaner, it seems to have it seems to have softened the paint up or bluing or I don't know, but, but, the, but I don't have to strip the paint on this thing. I just brushed it off. So there we've got the stripped parts. And I go to the drill press and a wire wheel and I'll clean up the uh, surface of, of the casting. And I'm questioning whether everybody does this. Everybody shines it up until the casting looks beautiful. And there you have it. But I sometimes wonder if it, the paint wouldn't hold on better to that uh, rough surface. But uh, anyway. 
So now we've got a little bit of flashing on these hubs. So I take my little triangular riffler and go in there and that looks a bit cleaner. Yep, perfect. It's a little bit of, oh, there's a lot. The casting is not that great. Uh, there's a little divot in the back here I want to fix and there's a couple other places where I'll put some putty, but there's no way I could restore the entire body because there's too many and um, there's too many details that stick up and if I put putty on there I'm not going to be able to sand it anyway. So we go in the spray booth the base gets the uh, gets the satin black paint and the body gets the white fine surface primer and since there's not a lot of repairs this is a pretty straightforward model wheels of course get their primer and of course I have to do both sides I think I only show one side on here now coming out of the spray booth next step I usually do this or almost always is I will come again and I will sand it I'm using uh, the micro mesh as uh, it's not sandpaper it's a sanding cloth and it has a kind of a rubberized uh, grit on it and this is for polishing plastic windows that's what it's designed for but you can do it you can use it for many many purposes and it's beautiful for doing these toys so I go in and I and I clean up the surface and smooth out the paint um, and of course the paint brings out other little flaws and I sand those out too and then it's done. I, I do it uh, wet and I use soapy water. It just has dish soap and it goes back in the spray booth. So it's a lot smoother. So now I'm not going to use those rusted axles anyway. I'm going to use a uh, pop rivet now because I've got a new idea. Now this is an aluminum pop rivet. They're very easy to work with. They're nice and shiny metal. And I file the end flat and I put it into my little specialized collet for these things that I made for another project. And that goes into the lathe and this is a 5C collet chuck and there's a there's a backstop in there so it, it uh, I can push it against the backstop and when I drill into it it won't the drill won't, uh, won't push it into the collet. So first I start with a center drill just a tiny bit because this is a, these axles are very tiny and then I've got a drill here that's smaller than the axle so you can imagine it's a very tiny drill and it's aluminum so it's not that hard to machine and I put a little hole in the end so you can see there's a hole so I'm going to use that hole and I'm going to put a little cap and I've got some wire nails these are 18 gauge so I chose my drill to be a little bit bigger than the shaft of these nails now the nails you can see that if you look carefully it's all the heads are off center so first thing I got to do is I got to file it I might in the future put it in the lathe to clean it up and I've made this little thing I'm, I'm experimenting with this I want to dome the head of the nail so I've made this little metal this little steel thing with a hole in it for the for the nail and then tap away with the hammer now the problem is with this one I don't know if I'm going to do this anymore that steel is too soft so I hammered at it but really I was hammering more the the steel of the of the die rather than the the steel of the nail head I'm gonna still look for brass nails that'll be maybe easier to deform but this is all I could find so now I've cut it off and there it fits in the end so that way I'll just be able to glue that in and so when I have a finished model 
and with all the nice shiny paint I won't be hammering away around it which always made me uncomfortable so now this is another one I'm trying a different process and that is to to put it in a pin vise and grind the head and it, it's a pretty good solution but it's very tricky to not grind it down so that it's too small so I did several tries and I chose the best two and maybe next time I'll have some new ideas and uh, I'll find a way to to do it better so here I go onto the buffing wheel and I polish it up so that it's going to look nice in the end So there's, there's another little head there. And then I shorten it up. These are pliers that, uh, if you haven't seen them before, uh, I cut, the, I cut the, the jaws of the pliers off so that just the tiniest bit of the cutting edge is on there, but it gives me very, uh, very high pressure, high leverage, so that I can cut these uh, axles very easily. And there's a head. That one's a little bit small. So here's the color that the body is going to be. It's the uh, Mr. Hobby Aqueous, the, the plain the number three red. And I'm not going to change the color at all because this is a fire engine red to me. And if I need to touch up or something I can just go straight to the jar I don't have to remix another color or save a bunch of paint in case I chip the paint or something so in goes the uh, leveling thinner that's the thinner that uh, dries more slowly so that uh, when it dries it'll get shiny even after you've taken it away from the spray booth so don't forget to uh, share and like and subscribe and remember now I'm showing you this is a, I want to show you this is my spray booth the new one and you can see the filter on the top I have a brand new one I wanted to show you that uh, yeah so remember to do the the liking which is uh, clicking the thumbs up as well and I often forget to do the thumbs up for people and uh, so I just want to remind you that's the easiest thing you can do is click that thumbs up. So I started with light coats um, for those wheels and for the body so it goes on it's a very faint and what I'm doing is I'm also hitting it on an angle because I need to make the ribs because all of the door frames and and, and details on this model are ridges that stick up from the from the body and those ridges uh, if you paint too heavy right away they will shed the paint and you'll wind up with these white lines under the paint so I, so I, I go in with the light coat and I go in on an angle and make sure all those ridges uh, have a good coat of paint before I go in with my wet coat which I'm doing here So I think I got a pretty nice color on there and, and a pretty nice finish. And now you can see that's how effective that filter was. The filter is completely red and the spray booth has no sign of the red. So all the overspray went into the filter. So here's my ladder. Even if I wanted to rescue this, it's broken off at both ends. So I ordered a new one from, uh, from Steve Flowers and I'll put the address in the description but there's a nice looking ladder and some of them had red paint on them and some of them looked like they were somehow polished or painted but it's hard to find uh, images online of of pristine uh, fire engines because they're all restored so some people have painted them with the metallic silver paint and some people have painted them red and I decided I'm going to leave it. This is this is very nice uh, ladder. It's tin plate, so it's not going to rust very easily, and it it looks very tidy. So I'm just going to go with the tin plate. 
Uh, and I think probably some of them came out of the factory unpainted. In fact, the one that was on it was unpainted and you can see um, over so many years, it didn't really rust that much. So I go in with my prong-nosed liars and twist those little tabs just to hold it in place. And then once I put the ladder on, it's easy to carry the, the toy around because I can carry it around with the ladder and not get my fingerprints all over the paint. So the, the original apparently had knobby tires. I don't have the correct knobby tires, but these are the, the Dunlop ones that are later and they look good. So I'm going to use those because I have them also from, from Model Supply Steve Flowers. So I put the base in and you can see it's a little bit springy which is perfect and I put my aluminum axle with the little hole in the end and then put the other wheel, I'll we'll put the other axle first. It's a pretty straightforward reassembly and it would have been very handy in the factory so it wouldn't be very difficult to put this together. So now instead of hammering away at my axles I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, this is a five minute epoxy and it's just the tiniest bit on the end of the toothpick. And I watch when I try and push this in. There's a vapor lock, so I push it and it springs back out. And eventually a little bubble popped and then it and then it stayed in there. And now we do the same for the for the back. This was this I, I was very happy with how easy this was to put together in the end. And no risk to the paint job and no risk of bending the axle while I'm hammering at it. So I've got to work on a way of making those ends uh, very quickly and easily. Now another thing that came, I, I ordered with it, uh, I, th I think it came with the, uh, with the ladder, is this bell. So this came with this little brass bell and I've seen some of them held on with a little piece of, of some kind of thread like a heavy thread but most of them I see have a little bit of wire so this is 20 gauge uh, copper wire so it's very easy to bend and it goes nicely with the brass bell so on this end I put uh, I just fold it right over so that so that the bell is doesn't come out of the bell and then I bent a little hook put it through the hole that comes with the ladder and then squeeze it in place. And there's the little bell. And now I notice something. I forgot to paint my detail. There's not a lot of detail on this, but I went all this far and I haven't painted the detail on this. Now these were done um, I read about it before the, these early models and some of the later ones the they were spray painted and there was like a cardboard mask and the mask would go up against the model and then they would spray paint so these things uh, they all look very rough so I decided I'm going to brush it on I'm using this is a Vallejo uh, acrylic paint this is airbrush paint so, but I've thinned it uh, so that it brushes on well and so I go in and I put it on 
and I'm not trying to get it exactly right and it's got these this is I guess a uh, representing a water pump on the back of the on the back of the fire engine so I wanted to put it deliberately so that it wasn't perfect because they definitely were not perfect when they came out of the factory so this is I'm trying to do this as a as a restoration So I don't I'm not going to add any other detail, no door handles, no none of that trim is going to be is going to be touched up only what was originally done in the factory which is the front grill and that uh, what I presume is a water pump on the back of the vehicle. So, let's remind you of where we started. It's a beautiful toy and the paint has certainly worn off a lot and the ladder has suffered and let's see what it looks like now well I think that's a, a beautiful toy uh, it looks a lot like what it would have when it was brand new and I'm very pleased with it so I hope you enjoyed this episode of Timo's Dinky Detailing until next time be seeing you